Good morning. How is everybody doing? So I always have to clear my vision every time I come on so I can read your comments and see those who are giving me stars. How is everyone? I've been out since Wednesday because I had a bad cold, but today I feel better. So when you don't see me online, just know I'm not feeling well. And most of the time I don't come out to tell my fans that I'm not feeling well. Every now and then I can post, but when you don't see me at around this time, 11.30, just know something is cooking. So if you're finding me for the first time, my name is Penny. I come uh, into your personal space through your social media feed, which is Facebook is my preference. My goal here is to uh, inspire you. My goal is for you to sit in, listen and learn. Uh, maybe one or two things. You don't have to learn a lot. Just learn one or two things by the time you're done listening to me. So, um, please share this video and go to my YouTube channel, subscribe to my YouTube channel. I do this during my lunch break because I choose to share my space with other people because we've been given these platforms for free. We don't pay. And, um, there is, um, opportunities that are out here for all of us now, like literally free. You can be making money while you're sleeping. And uh, you can do that by using these spaces um, wisely. So don't always be the consumer. Sometimes produce something, you know. Go out there and do something. You don't have to always come to Facebook and or, or Instagram or TikTok to just consume. You can sell products. You can advertise your, your services. Use these platforms for your own good. So if you're finding me for the first time, we usually do like a book. A book I'm reading that's why I said I invite you into my personal space because we are trying to live a life with purpose and um, this is the current book that I'm reading it's just a questionnaire that is going to ask you who you are so you can get to know yourself so you can be a better person self-care self-love is everything so uh, if you're finding me for the first time and you don't have a book you need to get a pen and paper if possible get a pencil where is my pencil I had a pencil here. Where did I put it? Um, a pencil. So that way you're taking your notes. I had a pencil. Wow. Oh, here. You can have a pencil with an eraser just in case you need to write things, just in, in case you need to, to, to cross anything out. Always have a pen and paper, especially when you get on social media or you start listening to people that, you know, you're learning from. Because these things, you hear them and then you won't remember. So let's go to the questions, okay? Uh, number one, how do you describe your past relationships? Think about it, take time. You've had relationships, maybe uh, friends, maybe family. How do you describe your past relationships? Write that down. Number two, when were you most at your best? Do you remember a time you were at your best? When was that time? When you were at your best number three what would you choose as the funniest moment of your life do you remember any time that things were so funny maybe you were with friends or maybe you you were with your family do you remember a moment that was so funny when was that moment remind yourself because you know they're trying to make you feel good about yourself number four have you ever experienced severe weather Yes, I have. Early this year, I went to Fort Lauderdale with my 12-year-old. He was 11 then, and we went for spring break. As soon as we landed at the airport, it started pouring. By the time we called Uber to get to the room, everything was shut down. And you know, we were very excited. We got a house by the beach. Everything shut down by the beach, and we were not able to get food until the next day at around three. So that moment you're like, oh my goodness, the cars were stalling. It was really bad. And then to make even matters worse, we were there for like five days. When we were getting ready to fly back, they canceled all the flight because the weather was bad. So have you ever experienced severe weather? Number five, have you ever been scared in your life? For those of us who drive, 
when you're on the road you are always scared especially for me when i go over a bridge you can be scared for nothing have you ever been scared number six what is the last lie you told and don't tell me you don't lie because you know that's not true but reflect they want you to reflect on your lies how often are you lying when was the last time you lied and even ask yourself, why did you lie? You know what I mean? Why do you lie? They're trying to ask you to be conscious, to create awareness that you lie. When was the last time you lied and why did you lie? Think about the things you tell people that are not true. Because too many lies can affect you. Too many lies can put you into depression. Number seven. What is the most irresponsible thing you've ever seen someone do? I think the most irresponsible thing I always see people do is drinking too much and then you cannot save yourself. Have you seen somebody do something so irresponsible? You're like, really? You actually did that? You know, what? when was that? And what was the thing that the person did? That's number, se number seven. Number eight. Have you ever consoled someone when somebody has lost a loved one? You know, some of us, they're asking you this question to even think about yourselves. Some of us are so busy doing what we are doing. When people are going through grief, you don't have time for them. Until it's your time to grieve, you find yourself without anybody. These questions are meant to help you think. Who is a friend? Who is a cousin? Who is an uncle? Who is the last person that you know that lost someone? Did you go and help them to console them? When, when was the last time you did that? They're asking you this question to create awareness. When people are going through grief, do you stop everything you're doing so you can go and console with them? Number nine, who has believed in you when you are at your lowest? Who has believed in you when you are at your lowest? I think for, for most of us who have children, I feel like our children believe in us regardless. But you know, some of you who don't have children, maybe it's your parents. Who is that one person who believes in you even when you know you're not doing good? You know, there are days you're, you know nothing is working. Who is that one person? Or who are those people that always believe in you? You can count on them. Number 10. Have you ever left a party early? A party early. In fact, this is a critical, when I was reading about this question, this is a very critical question. For, for most people, the parties are on Friday and Saturday. So, most people don't want to leave the party early. In Kisi, we have a saying that Engi in Tinaura or something like uh, the last fly that just lingers around gets, it gets to be killed. They're asking you about this to think about this. You have self-control. Some of you go to parties and you don't want to leave. Some of you go to parties and you're the last person. Every party, you're the last person. Have you ever gone to a party and you left early? Think about it. It is important that you leave early sometimes so you can go get some sleep. If it's a party where you are drinking, if you leave early, if you ha usually have six beers, you could have two beers. Or if you're the one who talks too much, if you leave early, you're, you're going to get enough sleep. Now you won't be talking too much. Have you ever left a party early? Think about it. And if you don't leave the party early, you need to practice that. Or turn even some parties down. Number 11, what has made you so proud? Again, for me, it's always my children because I gave birth to them, I've raised them. When my kids do things that really, you know, uh, I look, I'm like, oh, wow. My children always make me proud. I'm always proud of them. And yes, of course, my husband. My husband has done things over the years that made me feel so proud to have chosen him for a spouse. I'm like, oh, wow. Like really he's going above and beyond and, and I feel so proud of him. I'm like, wow, he's done this. This is really amazing. So, so most of the time it's the people that you interact with and when they make you proud, you should let them know that they've made you proud. It could be a friend. Some of you, it's your friends who are doing amazing things and they've made you proud. You're like, oh my goodness. And people associate that friend with you. They're like, oh, I'm so proud of Okari. Okari, I'm so proud of you. Get in that tendency of being proud of people when they achieve certain things. Sometimes people achieve things and they, they don't hear from us. They need to know that you're proud of them for whatever achievements they've made. Number 12. What has been the biggest inspiration? 
the biggest inspiration like you look you're like oh my goodness i'm so inspired what has been that biggest inspiration either you're looking at someone or something that people did or a group of people you're so inspired you're waking up you're like oh my goodness when was the last time you were inspired the biggest inspiration you can just sit down and be like wow and the reason why they have you thinking like this this is really deep thinking because people do things that are amazing when were you last inspired doro good morning when were you last inspired who did something that really inspired you you looked and you're like oh wow i just this is just it takes your breath away when were you last inspired think about that okay number 13 what is your most memorable birthday i i've spoken to a few people who don't care about their birthdays i even have co-workers who um come to work on their birthdays i don't subscribe to that my birthday is a big day i always make it big so they're asking you when is which one was the most memorable i have had so many i've had so many birthdays my goodness of course right i'm 50. I remember I started celebrating my birthdays maybe when I was 13, 14, maybe in, in primary school. So on my birthday, you know, February, we were in school. I'll just do something with my friends. I still have the journals from primary school who wished me happy birthday, who came. I still, you know, I like to journal. I have journals from primary school. I have journals from high school who bought me sweets. So they're asking you, what is the most memorable birthday, you like your birthday? So the last one, this morning, I remembered my birthday in Dubai. It was the first birthday that I celebrated with women, with, with no family members. I always did my birthday with my husband for the, for the longest. It was always me and him. We traveled together. We, you know, we do things together. Like, whenever, any place I want to go, he's always taking me. So this time... I said, when I'm going to turn 50, I have found so much value in, in uh, women friendships, which I didn't see before. And I said, you know what, at my age, this is something I discovered so late. There is so much power in, a, in coming together as women. And I said, wow, where have I been? So I figured I should have my birthday with just women. And for whatever reason, they're asking you this question. I want you guys to know that this morning I woke up and I remembered an incident around six that happened in Dubai. And I laughed so hard. It was so hard. And I text one of my friends and, and I asked her, what did so-and-so say? And we laughed like it just happened again. So celebrate your birthdays. Call us. You know, we'll come. Even if you just sit for three days. You know, celebrate the day that you were born. I know the Jehovah Witness don't believe in that. But they want you to create memories that you can be somewhere when you're having a bad day and you remember and you laugh. Okay? Number 14, what is, what is a situation you replay in your head often? What is a situation you replay your head often? Think about something that you replay a lot. Well, well for me, I, I often think how life is going to come to an end. For some reason, every day I'm, I, I just keep thinking like, oh my God, one day I won't be here. And then I start right, like thinking, you know what I need to do, what I need to do. I I always think about the world coming to an end. And you know your world can come to an end any day. So for me, that is what is always in my mind. I'm like, oh, wow. Yeah, sooner or later we won't be there. We'll be something of the past. What is that one thing that is always playing in your head? Paul, how are you? Okay, number 15. Who is someone you've impressed? Who is someone you've impressed? I always think, for me personally... The, person, the people that I really wanted to impress in my life was my parents. And I really did it in a way that made them proud. That's me. Some of you might be wanting to impress your friends. Some of you, uncles, aunties. For me, growing up, I wanted to impress my parents by the choices I was going to make. And, and I'm still so proud. My dad died knowing that I was self-sufficient. I wasn't a dependent. My dad died knowing that I had a family. So I'm happy. And I'm happy that I impressed my parents because you know what? I owe them that because they put so much in me. They invested so much in me. And when I do things now, I look back, I'm like, wow, this is how they 
dedicated themselves because I'm looking at myself and, and my husband and what we are doing for our children. So to me, the, the person that I really need to impress is my parents. So I don't know who you, you like to impress, but they're asking you to think about that. Is there a rumor about yourself that shocked you? <laughs> yes. In fact, the biggest, the, the biggest shock, the, like the biggest room I've ever had, where a bunch of women were talking about me saying I don't work, I don't have a job. And it's because in 2012, I stopped working full-time, I resigned, and I became a full-time mom. I opened my business. So I work, but I don't work every day. I work a couple of days a week, like on somebody's payroll. I was That was so funny, like... One person told another person, the other person came. Then one person came to ask me, oh, I had you quit your job, so now your husband takes care of you. <laughs> Actually, they were discussing it like, oh, my God, she just sits there. What does she do? They didn't even know I opened a business. They didn't know even, like, they have no idea. People have no idea what's happening in your house. But they decided that, you know what, she just quit her job and she's just depending on the husband. And she's, they're like, oh my God, oh, that woman. And then she had all these kids. And by the way, that time I had the fourth child. So the rumor was going like, why did I have so many children? Now I'm going to work my overwork my husband. I don't do anything. They didn't know that I quit my job and I started a business. So that, that really, I've never like forgotten that. that you know how people create stories about, <laughs> they're like, oh, she's always like home, you know? Or some think I'm always on social media. Like, you know, people think things about you and they decide it. that's how they are and they spread the rumors. Number 17. Who is the first, first person to call with good news? For me, it's my husband. My husband is always like the first person I call, whether I have good news or bad news. So have that person. I don't know who it is. For me, Abu has to know. For me, like good or bad, even sometimes he doesn't even have time to, to even listen. I'm just going to call him because he's a person that I comfortably feel comfortable just offloading my stories to, not the kids. Number 18, have you ever walked barefoot? Some, some of you have never had a chance to walk without shoes. I went to school from kindergarten, uh, first grade, second grade, and third grade. I went to school barefoot, no shoes, and jiggers. I had jiggers. I've had jiggers. So I know how that feels. Some of you don't know what it means not to have shoes. Try it. Okay, number 19. Have you ever hurt someone's feelings and didn't mean to? Yes. This one is like an everyday thing because most of us who like telling the truth. We just say things as they are. If somebody has a dress, you tell them the dress doesn't look good. Like if you really are, are like a truthful person, you're going to hurt people's feelings even when you didn't mean to. Number 20. Have you ever meant to hurt someone's feelings? Your intention was to hurt their feelings. Yes. For me, yes, I have hurt someone intentionally, but it's because I'm doing it to hurt them back. I don't start a fight, but I finish a fight. Those are keywords. I will never start a fight. I won't just come here and start fighting any door or start fighting Doro. I don't start fights. But once you start a fight with me, I will return a fight. And if I return a fight, I will tell you things that are going to hurt your feelings. Because you hurt my feelings, so I, I give you the same medicine. I don't know. I'm not those Christians or slap one cheek and turn the other cheek. I'm not the Christian that slaps one side and, and, and do the other side. No. And you know God is going to... Or karma is going to find them. No, I pay back. And this is not just anyone. This is to my husband, to my kids, anybody. If you deal with me and you do something bad to me knowingly, I'm going to punish you. And even the children, the same. My kids are doing things and they know knowingly because they know I speak. I'm their teacher. They're knowingly making mistakes. So I'm going to punish them so they can get the experience that I got. And next time they will not do that. Okay, so they're asking you if you hurt someone knowingly. And if you're saying no, I don't know. We do things to hurt people and we don't want to admit that we actually do that. 
Thank you for watching. I hope you listened and learned something. I hope you're inspired. And I hope you can wake up and live a life with purpose. The journey is always very different for all of us. The destination is the same. We are all going to one place, six feet under. We are all flying to Dubai. We are all flying to Kenya. But the people who are in first class are getting more comfortable uh, services. The people who are in first class are getting uh, refreshers as you're, you're running to catch your flight. What I, my goal I, I try to do for you and for me is to try and make your journey as comfortable as possible by, by listening and learning so you can live a life with purpose. So you don't have all these things going on because you're not thinking how the things you're doing can affect you, how you're not creating self-awareness. The kind of relationships you build, the kind of relation, people you associate yourself with, the kind of food you eat, the kind of uh, radio stations you listen to, what you're consuming. And that's why I come here to just create some awareness. If you create awareness, you're going to be a better person. You're going to feel good because you know you're hurting people. You won't hurt them because you know it's your birthday. You will celebrate because you know it's your friend. Call your friend who has lost someone. Go console with them. If you're doing all these things we are going through, you're going to have a comfortable life. So when it's your time, somebody is going to be there for you. It is a tit, tit for tat kind of lifestyle as much as we want to think that it's not. If you're there for me, I'll be there for you. God bless you. Share this video. And if you've not liked my page, please do that. If you've not gone to my YouTube channel and subscribed, please do that. Go to my YouTube channel and subscribe to my youtube channel and invite your friends over there in youtube right and let them listen and learn these are they are friends of yours who are not on facebook they are friends of yours who you know who don't have this time to scroll through share this video with them cheers and god bless you